We're going to be looking at equations with fractions and trying to solve them. So remember, equations have equal signs in them. They're things that we can come up with answers for. And when we're dealing with fractions, well, one thing that I like to think of is just trying to get rid of the fraction if I can. It's going to make my life simpler if I don't have to deal with a number on the bottom anymore, or even some sort of variable on the bottom. So, one thing that I like to visualize is just trying to get rid of all the fractions by multiplying the denominator to every single term on both sides and simplify. And we'll go through a few examples of that and um, keeping in mind that when we're solving equations we have to keep that equation balanced in a way which is why I want you to not forget even though you might not be writing it down that what you do to one side you're doing to everything on both sides of the equation. So when we've learned that idea it's often just a simple problem like this first example where there's literally one set of things on the right hand side and one set of things on the left hand side so it's quite easy to kind of forget about what's going on here but we're taking everything on this side of the equation and we're going to times that by four and we're taking everything on this side of the equation and we're going to times that by four and here it's pretty straightforward because there's just basically one thing on each side so a four divided by a four so timesing by four dividing by four those cancel that's why we do it we're left with x, and we get 12, reminding ourselves that 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, which is why we get 1x left. Okay, so if we look at that for another example, the same idea here, but I want you to break it out and think, okay, I'm going to do it to every single thing on both sides of the equation. So I see a denominator here that's a 3 on the bottom, and I'm thinking, okay, if I times every single thing by 3 on both sides of the equation, I'll be in good shape. So that means every single thing. So I'm going to times this by 3. I'll put brackets because there's a big fraction bar. I want to make sure I times all of that by 3. I'm going to times this term by 3. And I'm also going to times this term by 3 on the other side. So every single thing, every single term on both sides gets a times by 3. And we have to do that because if I forget, for instance, to times 2a by 3, I'm going to change the equation. I'm not doing the same thing to both sides anymore. So it's not just times to both sides, it's times every single thing on both sides. So, keep that in mind, we need to do that. So again, 3, timesing by 3 and dividing by 3, those will cancel. Now we don't have a fraction any. sorry, we don't have that fraction anymore, so we can write a minus 8. And there's no minus sign in front of it, so I can drop the brackets. Next thing is 3 times 2, gives me a positive 6a. And my last piece there is 9 times 3, which is 27. And now I've got an equation to solve with no fraction on the bottom. Thinking about what I need to do, combining terms, I see that I've got a plus 6a and an a. Those are going to combine to give me 7a. And I might show my work in here that I'm going to plus 8 to this side and plus 8 to that side, so those cancel. And you're going to get 7a is equal to... 35. And going one step here, we've got 7 times a equals 35, so to get rid of the 7 times a, we'll do the opposite. We'll divide that side by 7, and we're also going to divide the other side by 7 again, doing everything to everything on both sides of the equation. So dividing by 7 to everything on both sides, we're left with a is equal to 5. So just to recap again there, I saw that I had a 3 on the bottom and I timesed every single term by 3. Where I have a times 3 and a divide by 3 on a term, I can cancel, and that gets rid of my fraction. So I'm going to take a look at this next example, and we do have um, now two denominators. Same process holds true. If I wanted to get rid of a divide by 4, well, let's think about this. I can go times by 4 to every single thing, so times in by 4 here. I see a big fraction bar, so I'm going to put brackets around it, and I'm going to times by 4 over here. So every single thing got times by 4. And then we know we've done something legal there. Keeping in mind that timesing by 4 and dividing by 4 will cancel. So that simplifies. Now I see that I still have a 5 left on the bottom. So instead of going ahead and expanding all this out, I'm going to go ahead and deal with the 5 first, and then we'll go through at the end and tidy it up. So if I now times every single thing by 5, times by 5, times by 5, times by 5, I can cancel the 5, 
and a 5, because that's timesing by 5 and dividing by 5 for this fraction here. And now I'm left with certain things that I need to times out. So 3m just needs to be times by 5. I'm going to get 15m. Here I've got a 4 times everything on top there, so expand that through with your brackets. 4 times n is 4m. 4 times 2 is 8. And I'm going to leave that bracket there because I do have my negative sign here. Just to remind me that I need to take that through. And on the other side, I've got 4 times 20, effectively, so that's equal to 40. So watching out for that negative sign, I can't emphasize that enough how many of you will forget about it and do this problem wrong over and over and over and over again. Don't beat yourself up, just keep trying to get it right. When you see that negative in front of that fraction bar, make sure that you times that negative through. Because that's saying I need to subtract every single thing. I need to subtract the m and I need to subtract the 2. So that sign needs to change. Think about times in through a negative 1 if you want to expand that out. So we're going to be left with 15m minus 4m minus 8 is equal to 40. Combining like terms, 15m and minus 4m is going to get me to 11m. And I'm going to go plus 8 on this side and plus 8 on this side. So that's going to get me to 48 on the other side. And just as a aside, you guys might be wondering, well, if I have to times to every single term, like I did add a times to 5 here, a 5 here, and a 5 there, why don't I have to add 8 to every single thing? And that's because multiplying and, and adding are kind of different operations in a way. And so if I add literally 8 blocks to an equation on one or to one side of the scale and add another 8 blocks to the other side of the scale, I'm going to keep it balanced because I've added a total of 8 to each. But if I take just this piece and make that 5 times bigger, and I don't also make this five times bigger, I haven't made the whole entire side five times bigger like I may have over here. So that's why times and you gotta make sure you do it to every single term. For the adding eight, you can just do it once on each side. Anyways, our last step here, 11 times m, so I'm gonna divide by 11. And I've got m is equal to 48 over 11, and I'll leave that as a fraction. Okay. Um, one more example, I'd recommend to you guys, pause this, see if you can work through it on your own, and then check your answers afterwards. If you're ready to do that, um, please do. If you want to just go through it as another example, then let's do it. So I notice again here, I've got multiple terms on both sides. I've got big fraction bars. I might just drop brackets on those right now so I don't forget. I've got lots of fractions on the bottom, or denominators on the bottom that I want to get rid of. So again, what I'm going to think to myself is, okay, if I times every single thing by 5, times by 5, times by 5, times by 5, I haven't changed the equation, and my 5 and 5 on top and bottom there can cancel. Next step, times in by 3 to get rid of this one, times by 3, times by 3, and times by 3. Times in by 3 and dividing by 3, cancel. On the other side of the equation, even though it's on the other side, I can still do the same thing if I times by 2, and times by 2, and times by 2. Times in and dividing by 2 will cancel off and become 1. Now that I've gone through that process, I'm just going to come back up and look and see for each of these terms what's left for me to times by. And on the first one, I see there's a times 3 and a times 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, and then I can times that by the 4. So 4 times 6 gets me 24x. I see my big negative there in my fraction bar. I'm left with a 2 and a 5 to times through, so that's 10. So I'm going to get 30x minus 50. And over here, I see that I've got a 3 and a 5 left, that's 15. So I'm going to have 15x plus 15 on the other side of the equation. I'm going to take through that negative now. If you get, if you get used to seeing that, you can do it in one step, please do. But I just wanted to emphasize it a couple more times for you guys. Being aware of that fact, when you've got that negative there, we need to times it all the way through. So it's 24x minus 30 now, and then plus 50. Because a negative times a negative becomes a positive. And there we've got 15x plus 15 on the other side. Next step for me, be combining any like terms that I can. I've got a 24x and a minus 30x. That simplifies to minus 6x. 
You see I have a plus 50 here, so I might go plus 50 on that side and plus 50 on that side. We'll go ahead and simplify that out. 15x, those of, oh sorry, ha, huh, if you haven't already yelled at me for getting that wrong, you're right. That is a plus 50, so what I need to do, minus 50, minus 50, that's better. Um, so those will cancel down, and I've got 15x on that side, and over here I have negative 35. Thinking about taking the x's to the other side, I'm going to subtract 15x from this side, and subtract it from the other side as well. So I've got negative 21x is equal to negative 35, dividing by negative 21, divide by negative 21, x is equal to do this out for ourselves real quick. A negative divided by a negative, those will cancel, so it's going to be a positive number. And 35, that's 5 times 7. And 21, that's 3 times 7. So I know I can cancel out the 7s, or simplify that fraction to just be 5 over 3. So when you can simplify the fraction, make sure you do that. Okay, so remember that when you're dealing with the fractions, it's literally taking every single denominator and timesing it by every single thing on the top. Show it out in step by step so that you don't lose off what you need to times by what. Make sure you go back there and simplify and cancel things down, like a 2 divided by a 2, or a 3 divided by a 3. And watch out for those negative signs. Again, if it's a positive sign, it's not going to be an issue for you. It all stays the same. But if it's a negative, make sure you get that through onto the second term. Okay.